Do you want to know what goes into spraying kitchen cabinets? Well, I brought in the best of the best to give us a detailed look on what the whole process looks like from start to finish. We're going to take you inside a real life high-end kitchen cabinet spraying job with Rad from PaintCore, and he'll provide his insight and give you the ins and outs of what it takes to be a professional paint sprayer. I'm James from thepaintpeople.com, and today, let's head over to PaintCore's spray factory to talk to the company's owner about spraying cabinets and woodwork. How's it going, buddy? Good, how are you, man? Not bad, not bad. My name's Rede Makura. We're based out of Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. He's a much bigger expert on the subject of paint spraying than I am. So I figured he'd be the perfect person to talk to today about the entire process of spraying. So obviously you're involved with paint, right? But you're not just any painting company that does a little bit of everything. You, you do specialize yeah, in one very specific avenue. We're a niche business that specializes in respraying kitchen cabinets and furniture. We could spray trims, doors, uh, built-ins, um, vanities, kitchen cabinets, but kitchen cabinets are our main focus. With spraying, as far as I understand, you do get that beautiful factory finish that you would get in a store, just brand new. You don't see any brush marks or roller marks. It's for the aesthetic purpose and durability as well because the paints that we use are specifically made to be sprayed. So we're taking the industrial version of paint and bringing it to the home. Why hire someone like you in the first place? <laughs> well, first of all, your kitchen's an expensive part of your home, right? So mm -hmm. you don't want to ruin it with brush strokes and latex-based paint, this gummy paint that doesn't, it chips very fast, it doesn't clean well. You really want to add value to your cabinets. So how you add value to cabinets, you, what you do is you spray them to make them look like they came from the factory again. Mm -hmm. That's the point, right? You don't want to have a $30,000 kitchen that you just throw some latex paint on top and destroy it, right? You want to call a guy like me who will take care of it. It's like repainting a car. It's the same thing as repainting a car. It's an investment, Would you right? brush and roll your car? No, you shouldn't brush and roll your cabinets. So if I'm a customer, a prospective customer looking to get my cabinet refinished and uh, I come across your site, I see that you're a reputable company. What is the first thing that I would do to start the whole process? So you would, uh, to engage with us, you'd go to paintcore.ca, upload photographs of your kitchen to our website. We'll give you a price within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. The day we start your job, we send in a crew and they pick up all your cabinet doors, your drawer boxes and bring them back to our factory. I understand there's a process where some of it's sprayed on site and some of it's sprayed off site. So what's the benefit of, of having those doors removed and taken to your shop? Since we work in occupied homes all the time, we want to minimize the impact and the aggressive nature of the work that we do within the home. Okay. So 50% of the job gets taken back to the factory so we can do it in a controlled environment. The carcasses that get sprayed on one side only, your cabinet boxes, all the stuff that's attached to the walls, there's not as many sides to those pieces so we can spray them all on site, sand them and keep it relatively clean in the home. Let's go into the process of, of how an old piece of wood becomes a beautiful refinished door that, that you guys produce. There's some sort of prep that's involved. Can you go into how the surface or the substrate is prepped before painting? Yeah, for sure. So most of the jobs that we do require degreasing. These cabinets have been used, they've been touched, oils, residual grease, all kinds of stuff around these cabinets. So we do, we degrease everything first, then we sand everything down to get a good sanding and cleaning, blow it off, everything gets primed. So we use a pre-catalyzed primer to prime everything. Between the primer coats and the, and the top coats, we sand, and we put in three coats of uh, pre-catalyzed lacquer, waterborne finish. Is that a finish that you use more often than not, or does it depend on the job or the substrate? Mm -hmm. I would say 90% of our jobs are done in that kind of product, yes. Okay. A waterborne pre-catalyzed lacquer. What do you like about working with that product? It's fast drying, it dries hard, good blocking resistance, beautiful finish, super smooth, easy to touch up, easy to work with. All around, aesthetically, it's beautiful. It looks like a factory finish when it's done. In regards to the sprayer itself, obviously there's, there's tons of different products out there, uh, but based on your experience, what, what gives paint core the most mileage? What's the most common sprayer that you use for a job like respraying a kitchen? Okay, so we have multiple sprayers that we use. The majority of sprayers that we use are just airless sprayers, just basic airless sprayers, like a Graco 395. Okay. Uh, we use those on site all the time. With a smaller job, we might use a HVLP turbine gun or something like that. In the factory, we'll use air assisted airless or airless guns like Kremlins and Gracos. We use airless for the output, of course, because of all the, you know, you want speed. Also, it, it directly puts the paint onto the surface without any air or any interruption. Mm -hmm. As soon as you interrupt the coating, you can add air bubbles into the coating, things can happen. So airless is very efficient at moving water base from the pump to the substrate. We use dedicated machines for many things. So we might use an airless gun for just primer, and have primer running through it for its whole existence. We might have uh, 
uh, HVLP gun that we use just for clears, right? So there's dedicated things for dedicated products and jobs. All right, so the next phase of your project, you've, you've come to the house, you've already seen what you're working with, you've removed some of the doors, you've taken them to the factory. What's the next step? A job of this size, we had probably five guys on site every day. So this is not the average job that we normally do. That being said, uh, we brought four guys there. We had to mask up the whole house. Um, Let's talk about masking. Yeah. Masking seems to be a crucial part of the process, right? Most important part. For the people that don't know what masking is, it's basically the prep of the project, making sure everything is taped off and plastics covering everything. What we do is we mask off everything we're not spraying in the kitchen, basically. So your walls, your countertop, uh, the floors, uh, parts of the ceiling, anything that's attached to your cabinets, we enclose the area, we add a vent, so we vent out all the overspray. You yeah. actually have people that are living in their house while you're doing your yeah, work? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of our clients are in the home while we're spraying their cabinets in the house, yeah, for sure. That's huge. Yeah. You even have a ventilation system. We do have a ventilation it. system. We basically create a draft to suck out all the overspray. Is there like a ratio or a percentage of time invested in the masking process versus the painting? <laughs> sure, so in the typical kitchen, we'll get all the masking done before 12 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll do the spraying within, from 12 to three, the spraying will be done and we're out of there by probably by four or five o'clock. That's average, depending on the job size, mm -hmm. right? Some kitchens take more, it's all relative. As useful as all that information was, let's see it put into action by becoming a fly on the wall on one of Rad's recent projects. So this is me here spraying at the carcass on the job site. We're spraying in Simply White. To the left, you can see the ventilation pipe going out the window. We're ventilating the area, creating a negative draft. Here I'm spraying underneath the office area in the kitchen. So this kitchen has a built-in like little office desk. And we masked off all the walls, countertops, backsplash, floor, uh, parts of the ceiling. Here we're spraying the, the frames of the cabinets where the doors sit. And this is a very challenging part of the job to spray these types of frames without overloading the paint on the frame. So we gotta be very careful not to get any drips and runs in these areas. As well as spraying these frames, you gotta make sure that you mask properly and all your masking is really tight. Think of it kind of like a, a skin on a snare drum. You want it to be nice and tight. You can see I'm wearing a Tyvek suit here with a 3M mask. Here I'm methodically uh, trying to spray all these little frames. They're very tiny and they, they, they require a certain touch when it comes to spraying. Again, you don't want to overload this area. When you do overload this area, it definitely starts to run. There's a lot of details um, in this woodwork here and you can get runs and build up paint in these areas and it just comes up, it's not a professional job when it's all done. So you gotta be very careful. Over here, I'm spraying the crown molding and I'm using a Graco 395 spray gun with a 25 foot whip hose. These hoses are great under pressure. They're very thin and malleable, but you can, uh, it's not as cumbersome as a regular hose, much better for getting in and out of areas uh, when spraying kitchen cabinets. As you can see, the kitchen's big, it's a monster kitchen. We are very careful at the directing airflow here, so we don't wanna get overspray on uh, existing pieces that we sprayed. Also making sure we don't get an overspray on dry pieces as well, because that will leave a rough finish. As I'm spraying here, I, I, I pay uh, particular attention to gloss quality and the, the quality of the wet film that I'm applying. I wanna make sure the wetness is the same throughout. That way I know it's gonna leave a, a consistent sheen when, when dry. You wanna know what it looks like wet in comparison to what it looks like dry and understanding that. There's, there is a science to watching paint dry. Here we're using a 411 tip, FFLP, fine finish, low pressure by Graco, amazing tip. Here I'm spraying about four to five inches away from the substrate. The importance of this hose is, 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 I can't stress it enough, this hose is definitely something that makes your job easier. Anybody with experience with a regular airless hose understands that you can't, 
you can't move those hoses around like you can something like I have here. This 25 foot whip hose is a godsend. We love it. All my guys use it. Here I'm making sure I get uh, enough paint in the corners. Paint tends to bounce off the corners and not really get in there. So you got you should do a 50% overlap at the corner. 50% on the wall, 50% on the on the substrate. So as you probably noticed, once everything has been masked off and prepped properly, the spraying itself isn't all that time consuming. Because we saw what actually happens at the work site, let's get back to Rad and dive a little bit deeper into the paint shop's workflow. There's obviously a lot of painting that's happening on site, but then there's also simultaneously a lot of stuff happening in your shop, Absolutely. right? In the, in the factory. Yeah. So can you explain the process of how the doors are being sprayed over over here where we're at now? Yeah, exactly. So the doors get brought back here, um, they get degreased, the degreasers First thing we gotta do, we gotta clean off all residual oil and fingerprints and food, who knows what's on there, right? Mm -hmm. Then we'll sand everything down. After that, they get primed. So typically they get one to two coats of primer and two to three coats of pre-catalyzed lacquer. Holes get filled if you wanna fill your holes. We bond all holes so you can relocate your hardware if you like. Everything gets packaged up and uh, shipped back to the house. So you also can obviously handle with, with hardware. So yeah. if the handles do need to change out, if you're going from small to exactly. nice long ones, yeah. you can also take care of all that yeah, too. Yeah, knobs, pulls, whatever you like, we can do it. Once all the doors have been sprayed, uh, is there like a, a drying time or a curing time like that you have to wait before you can reinstall them? Really, the product that we use has like um, 18 hours, you can package it, right? You can package this product within 18 hours after it's been dry. It's made to be a high production, high volume product. So we can install the job typically the same day that we spray the carcasses. So we bring the doors that day, we spray the carcass, we can put the doors on that same day with no problem. Not every job will be like a new construction where you can just, you can go to town. A lot of these jobs, you know, based on my experience too, is they're living in the house and they want to minimize the impact on their life. We really specialize in spraying in occupied homes. That's like our specialty. One thing spraying in a spray booth or spraying uh, an exterior, when you're spraying beside a baby grand piano, it's a whole different ballgame. So once all the painting has been done, you know, both on site and at your shop, can you go into a little more detail on the installation process? Yeah, so the installation process is just as important as the painting process. It, you know, if you don't install these cabinet doors properly, especially white cabinet doors that show every crack and crevice in the cabinets, you know, you really gotta be careful on how you install them, make sure everything's level, hardware's on properly. Um, a bad installation can ruin a good paint job. When you are reinstalling some of the doors on in the drawers, you don't actually remove the entire drawer. Oftentimes it's just the wooden panel Yeah, it depends how the, the drawer boxes are made, how the faces are put on. Most of the time we can just take the face right off, but sometimes we gotta take the whole box with us. Okay, yeah. is, that, is that very common or is... It's 50-50, I would say, yeah. But the beautiful thing is that you can leave all your stuff in your cabinets. You don't have to take out all the, all the plates, all the stuff we mask around, all that. The average kitchen takes about 10 business days to fully finish. That being said, we only spend one to two days in the home. The rest of the work gets done in the factory. So the day we spray is most likely gonna be finished in that day on site, right? So your cabinets, your carcasses will be done in one day. And then when we come back with the doors, we just need about a day to half a day to install them. That's it. So very low impact, really. Low impact, yeah. yeah. It's not an aggressive renovation, but it adds so much value to your house when you see the finished product. In terms of price for performance, nothing beats paint. Some people may be discouraged about doing it, right? Because you know you are investing money, but that's exactly what it is. It's an investment in your home. You add so much value, especially with kitchens and also bathrooms too. Those are two areas that really, really make a huge difference. Absolutely. Painting, to me, is gives you the best price for performance. Uh, it is an investment. That being said, you have to be very careful to do a good paint job because a bad paint job will devalue your home in a lot of ways. So you want to hire a professional and make sure they give you the highest quality paint and service so you add that value to your home. If you're already putting money into it, you might as well do it properly. Paint spraying is definitely a specialized skill, but it does provide pretty unparalleled results when done properly. You don't necessarily need to completely gut and replace your kitchen in order to transform it for the better. Sometimes you just need a little paint, actually a lot of paint, and maybe a good spray gun and maybe paint core. If you wanna see more of these spray related videos, please let us know in the comment section below and we'll continue to make them. Here's a video we did with Dazzling Dave talking about paint sprayers, if you wanna check that out. Thanks again to Rad and all the guys from Paint Core for taking part today and thanks to all of you for watching. See you on the next one. <laughs> I can't compare with you, Dolly Parton compared